is that? Is that Summoner's War on the TV? With no lag? What? How's it going everybody? Welcome to another Farmer Phil series. I believe this is episode 6. And I've got a big surprise for you. No, it is not the 5 star Saic. We're still missing one 4 star Angelmon. We're gonna get it soon, don't worry. It's actually if one. First off, surprise, preview. If you saw the beginning of this video, I figured out a way to get a literally lag-free video option for YouTube, and then I'm gonna have it soon, within the next week or two, and it's gonna be available for you guys. It's gonna be awesome. I just figured it out, and um, it's awesome. I'm really excited about it. So let's get into the episode. So to start it all off, uh, looking at some of the monsters we've got, I think I showed you this. I don't know, but I got the Barb King. Obviously, it's not farmable, so we're not gonna hold on to it. Obviously, uh, I got a ring leveled up to level 25. Got some decent runes going on there. She's got some decent stats. Um, her crit rate could be better, but you know, paired with Sayak should be good. So. Looking at this, actually, I want to show you B5 Giants team. It's uh, close to 100%. It's pretty, pretty dang close. I'd say in the 90s, high 90s, uh, success rate is just flying by. Just check this out. It, it's freaking smooth. And I told you guys, you, you non-believers, you're like, oh, how are you going to farm Giants B5 when I can't even do it yet? Well... Here it is. So obviously my team is just making its way through this dungeon. Very, very smooth. Whenever something goes wrong, RNG based. Tion, the reviver, cleans it all up. And I don't know, I think I was a little bit unclear in my last video. When I was talking about Giants before, about the revive, I was not talking about Crystal Revive. Never Crystal Revive. Bad idea. Unless you're going for that Light and Dark Scroll. It's always a bad idea to use Crystals for that. Don't do it. Uh, I was talking about Tion reviving my units. Usually it was like, um, I think it was like Saic would die and then Tion would revive him and then I'd heal up. That's what I meant, so just to clear things up. One of the awesome things that I've actually noticed about Erang is that she has an awesome third skill which actually puts a lot of debuffs. It puts slow, slowness, attack debuff, and it has, I believe, armor break on it. And this just pretty much packs the entire punch. It makes Shannon pretty much only useful for her third skill and first skill because that glancing hit just does wonders. It's also very helpful on this level that there's no armor break. Uh, so this is one of those runs that's actually like, oh man, uh, Tion actually died in this one. Uh, usually Tion doesn't die. Tion's actually like the last to die, but really fast. Erang just nukes down the boss and just, just like that, boom, dead. Uh, usually Tion doesn't die. So this is actually one of the bad runs and it still works on the bad runs. So that just shows you that I've got my stuff going for it. Now, of course, Giants B6 is a different story. I'm going to be doing that one soon. I'm, I'm just climbing up. I'm just climbing up the ladder. Let's go ahead and give it a try. I want to see if we can make it work. I'm going to bring Erang instead of Saic because I want those debuffs. Those debuffs are important. What I'm afraid of is that my units are not strong enough to withstand the extra mobs. These little crystal tower things right here too. Uh, they can be quite a handful if you're not careful, if your monsters don't have, you know, look at that. You see, they ignore defense just like that. So you really have to have that right amount of HP, otherwise they're just going to annihilate you. I've also got my Shannon on despair runes. That helps a lot. So if you can get the right runes, do it. Let's see just how far they can make it. I don't think they'll make it past the actual mini boss stage. They might be able to get past this stage, but I don't think they'll get any further than the mini boss. And it's actually really nice. I've got three healers. I've got Tion that heals and revives. I've got Konamaya that heals and removes debuffs. And then I've got uh, Rakasha who actually just heals. I'm gonna try to run a similar team like this up until like Giants B7. I might include Saik in there for that extra damage. It depends when I decide to get rid of Arang. I don't plan on keeping her permanently. Maybe I will fuse her later down the road, but right now she's going to be fusion for Sigmaris. That is the ultimate plan. So here we are at the mini boss stage. Okay, so the fact that my units just can constantly revive and that Tion has such an, a quick revive, I've never seen revives just get pumped out that fast without violent runes. 
that's just awesome especially on manual mode with konamaya and Tion together you could probably pump out that revive in the next two turns if you really needed to and it's also very helpful that rakija has a really quick heal so we actually were able to make it past the stage okay so it looks like we're starting to lose units here so we can't make it to the boss stage quite yet I'm not sure if the boss stage has that defense break. If he does, um, we're in for some difficult fighting, but if he doesn't, like the Giant Speed 5 one it doesn't, uh, I think we can do it. This is probably going to take us a couple more weeks to do. We can make it all the way to the fourth stage part. So there's five stages, the third being the mini boss and then the fifth one being the actual boss we can make it all the way to the fourth one that's pretty good granted we are only level 23 so i should be farming giants b7 before i hit level 30 um it should not be that difficult i just need to get a couple of my monsters up to five star and better runes i'm probably going to start pumping up these runes to plus 12 here soon i'm starting to get some really nice runes some better runes um like some HP percent runes, some five star runes. It's just all about the runes and farming. It also helps that I've got a really nice synergized team with the debuffs. I've got each debuff being pumped out onto the boss at a pretty consistent rate. Now, just looking at the units, I don't have the best units. It's probably a given that if I had natural four stars or natural five stars, I would probably be farming Giants B6 or even Giants B7 now. And I'm only a level 23. That's actually pretty surprising to me. I thought this is actually going to take a little bit longer. This is actually going a lot faster than I anticipated. I've just been doing the right calls, doing the right things. And everything that I've kind of just thought would work has worked. Oh, look at this. Some of these runes aren't even maxed yet. So that just shows you the potential that this team has. I'm also going to be moving over to Dragon's Dungeon. And I really hope that I'll be able to farm uh, Dragon's B7. Uh, at least a few weeks after it's going to be pretty difficult because the dots can be really a big handful for konamaya konamaya only will throw this heal off every i think it's three turns total now let's go through the runes on what we want to sell it's a hard choice for every player no one wants to sell runes especially the ones that have decent stats on them but you need to be picky if you want to make improvements so looking at some of these runes they've got attack based substats that's not what we want even the main stats, it's not what we want. Anything like that. See, crit damage might be useful if we decide to build a monster that scales off of HP and does decent damage, but the attack power, the crit rate, all of that stuff, we do not need that. Defense accuracy, we do not need that. This five star one, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it just in case I need it for a filler one, that'll be decent. But look at these substats, it's not going anywhere. And even now, only at a level 23, I'm gonna be pretty concerned with the substats. Even with accuracy, I don't need that accuracy accuracy and resistance is pretty broken right now so it's basically putting it accuracy is not going to guarantee you it's just going to give you a better chance at getting good rng so let's go through these runes i don't need any swift attack percent runes i don't need accuracy this one i might keep because it's got a, it's a legendary rune we might get some good speed on here and it's got attack on there if i really want to use it as a substat but other than that we don't need any of those main stats i'm going to keep that one because it's got speed and hp uh, this one, I'm going to go ahead and keep. I actually do need those HP% percent ones. And then any of these attack-based runes, I don't need them. The only ones that I know that actually used swift attack% percent runes are ones that scale off of uh, speed, like the Samurais, like the Wind one, or even the Chimeras. So it's not our concern for right now. We're going to keep that one since it has a speed substat. And now, it is a 4-star rune. If it was a higher grade, that speed plus 3 would be like a plus 6 or a plus 7. Now, this, actually, where is it? So, slot 2 this is what you got to be looking at for swift runes it's a speed based four set okay that means you want speed on slot two why would we be wanting attack percent or hp percent runes so i messed up there we don't want that hp percent rune we want speed on slot two if we're going to be using swift that's the main focus even now at a level 23 that's what we're looking for now moving over to fatal runes let's look at some of these defense fatal attack percent based four set with defense defense percent main stat no that's not working now looking at all of these we want attack and crit damage look at that that rune right there is what we want okay so we're, we're gonna keep that speed on fatal can work i'm gonna go ahead and keep it for now just in case we need it but you really don't need to keep it i'm keeping it just in case speed crit rate accuracy it's a three star rune get rid of it moving over to despair runes which are becoming more available to us as we farm higher in giant's dungeon we don't need a lot of these runes like this one 
It has attack based substats. We don't need that. This one doesn't have any HP percent based substats. Uh, we do want speed and HP percent we don't need. It's a three star. We're looking at four star runes now. We can't make any progress without taking any leaps. Defense percent, that's four star. That's okay. We're keeping all these speed ones because we really want the speed. Speed helps a lot, especially four star and above. You really want to get those five star ones though. The difference between a five star and a four star speed rune slot two is actually three speed. That's it. What makes the six star rune so much better than the five star rune for speed on slot two is the fact that your substats are going to be much much larger if you have a five star rune and you upgrade the substats it'll probably be between a four to six percent upgrade if you do it with a six star rune it's like guaranteed to at least be six percent bonus which is huge you could even get higher than that and that is huge that's how you get those like 20 to 30 percent substats on your runes so we sold all of our runes away and look at that we're up to 115,000 mana so that just shows you it's not hard to get mana it just takes some effort and some work so we're gonna go ahead and go over here to the garuda we're gonna purchase that garuda and we're gonna see if we can get that last skill upgraded on the konamaya we really 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 want that cooldown to be as few as possible and that's because as we make our way up in giants we're going to start encountering more defense break from the towers and that is a huge huge problem so we didn't get that third stat upgraded that is okay we will get it upgraded because there's only one left on this one and there's none left on this second one and so we've only got this last skill and this first skill that means we need two more garudas two more that is all i'm also thinking about building a water golem for fame on hell farming i've actually got a exp booster i'm gonna try to get this exp booster used within the next five days definitely before it runs out i'm not sure where i'll farm but i'm gonna start leveling up some of these units i'll probably use it to level up ramagos to four star max level and i'll feature that in one of the uh, few and i'll actually feature that in one of the future episodes don't worry I'll show you the best efficient way to farm EXP, especially at a low level when you don't have that single farmer that's like already six star max level. And there is a way to efficiently farm. It just involves choosing the right monsters in the right stage and the right mode. Now, if you can't tell, I've actually saved up quite a few harpoos. The reason is, Colleen is actually an excellent replacement for Chasun. She does not have that balancing skill which is pretty huge for Chasun, but she heals and she increases the attack power, which is one of the main things about Chasun. So where did I get all my rainbow mod, you might be asking? Well, if you go over here to Guild Wars, I highly suggest joining a guild. It is huge. Even if you don't have the monsters, it is great to join a low level guild. Just try to get those guild points. And if you look over here, oh yeah, those scrolls are so tempting, right? No, don't buy them. A waste of time. Look at that, Rainbow Mon, four star max level, all right? It's 150 guild points, easy to purchase, the best purchase that you can make in the guild shop. I highly recommend buying this the first thing you do. Even on my main account, which is, got, even on my main account that has over 36 star monsters, I still buy this Rainbow Mon the first time every single week as soon as it comes out. That's the first thing I buy. Now, if you have over 150 guild points and you can actually spare some, I would start working on your Ifrit immediately. I probably won't get my Ifrit until after I have a few 6-star monsters, and that's just because I don't make that many guild points. And you probably won't neither, unless you join a guild that is actually around your level and you can get around 200-300 guild points a week. So save up those guild points and start purchasing your Ifrit and your Rainbow Mon. You should not be spending it on anything else. You could probably spend it on some of these fusion recipes if you really need it. You, but your main focus should definitely be the Rainbow Mon. It is huge for that Rainbow Mon, especially because fusion takes a lot longer to do, and you'll probably have a few six star monsters before you do the fusion. So I highly recommend buying the Rainbow Mon and the Ifrit pieces. Now the thing with the Ifrit is there's two Ifrits that are actually very useful. I will have use for all three of them because obviously being free to play and only farmable you have to make use of every single monster and natural 5 stars are just naturally better because one they usually have better skills and two 
they have better stats. So I'll probably be using the Wind Ifrit probably in Giants B10. I'm not sure yet, but I will probably have a use for him if I summon one. Hopefully I summon Theomars first. Tessarian might be okay as well, but I really want Theomars. He is very, very good and really easy to use. Now, if I do decide to not use all of the fusions, since some of the fusion is actually not farmable, the only one that I actually know of that's not farmable is the Veramos, because Ikea and Argon are actually not farmable. Ikea requires the Fire Beast Hunter, which isn't farmable, and Argon requires the Wind Lizard Man, which isn't farmable. So I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to use Veramos, but I'm pretty sure Sigmaris and Katarina are both 100% farmable. So we should have no problem using those monsters inside Trial of Ascension and Dungeons. That's all I really got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked it. I'm really making an effort here to get Farmer Phil prepared for Trial of Ascension. As it is right now, we can make it somewhere in the 20s, maybe even 30s in Trial of Ascension. Considering that there's 100 levels, it does get exponentially harder. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned for some more Farmer Phil series, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!